Quantification in CASA XPS is usually performed based on the selection of VAMAS blocks in the right hand side. The Quantification Parameters dialog window with its Report Spec Property page makes use of this selection and generates text reports on the basis of regions and components that are defined on the selected VAMAS blocks. As an alternative to creating text-based reports, the same tables can be plotted at the same time as the data in a display tile. And this is performed using the quantification property page on the annotation dialog window. There is a, a new table type on the quantification property page that allows data gathered from regions and components to be displayed in a profile format. This means that the data will appear in columns rather than a row-based report, which is typical for these other options. The VAMAS file used in this example is a depth profile and it consists of a set of narrow scan regions and these are identified as oxygen 1s, carbon 1s, nitrogen 1s, aluminium 2p and fluorine 1s and they have previously been prepared with regions on each of these s orbitals so the fluorine, nitrogen, carbon and oxygen all have regions that allow a background and then the intensity above the background is used to calculate the area of the peak, full width half maximum, position and various other parameters which can be reported in some way and then in addition we have the aluminium 2p which has a region but it also has a set of components that are defined to separate an oxide peak from the metallic aluminium peak. So when a report is generated it will include regions from each one of these s orbitals and the components will be extracted based on the signal that is non-zero from this peak model. That's because the a background component is defined here which will have an RSF set to zero and the aluminium metal peak is characterized by the aluminium 2p 3 halves peak so the RSF for the aluminium 2p 3 halves peak will be used whereas the one half peak the RSF will be set to zero so we should find a different RSF between the metal peak that is a single part of the doublet and a peak that represents both parts of the doublet for the aluminium oxide the primary purpose for the quantification option that we're about to use is verification of processing that has been performed on these data. I'm going to use both in profile format and we'll start off by selecting a VAMAS block and then applying this table to the specific VAMAS block. So when I press the apply button a table appears and at the moment only the oxygen 1s is selected and so I only see a single entry. However, if I select the entire row, we then see a full row that represents the atomic concentration that's been calculated from the regions in the case of these s orbitals and then a pair of components for the aluminium. So this is one row within this depth profile, but if we select the entire set of VAMAS blocks, then we see a table that represents the atomic concentration for each cycle of this depth profile. We may wish to verify that all of these RSFs have been set up correctly for these different regions and components and one way of doing this would be to change the table and select a different option that you see in these tick boxes. So I want to say include RSF and when I use this include option then the table will change from being atomic concentration to relative sensitivity factors. Let's just get the data out of the way so we can see. And in this case, the relative sensitivity factors are all identical, and that's as it should be. And these are Schofield cross sections. And for the aluminium, we have two different sensitivity factors. And this is because the aluminium oxide was a, a complete doublet pair, whereas in the case of the aluminium metal, rather than using both peaks one of the doublet pair had an RSF set to zero namely the aluminium 2p one half while the aluminium 2p three half 
because it's a smaller peak compared to the full doublet, must have a, a smaller RSF. And this is the cross-section for the aluminium 2P3 halves. So this means that the amount of substance measured by this one peak in the doublet will be comparable to using two peaks in the oxide. So this represents verification that we have indeed got all of the RSFs set up correctly. Other things that we might look at, if we delete the table and then choose a different option, such as include the forward half maximum, we can then look at how the profile changes as a function of etch cycles in terms of the forward half maximum. So each one of these is now reporting the forward half maximum and you'd expect here some kind of consistency between these aluminium metallic peaks and you can see that the first one is slightly inconsistent with the rest so that might be worth going back and having a look at and there are various other things that might happen such as peaks may change in position so that would be a case of removing the current table and then we will undo the include forward half maximum and in this case we'll say exclude the concentration all of the tick boxes are left unticked and the idea in the case of the position is that there isn't an include button so if we exclude the concentration the next in the list of tables available will be position so when I press the apply button I now get a position table so we can have a look at the different positions within this profile and indeed this shows up quite nicely how the oxide peak does move as a consequence of the etch cycle. This is occurring as the film of oxide is reduced then the position of the peak is adjusting and that might be something you would be interested in having a look at to see what this actually means in terms of the measurement. Is this chemical state change or does this represent some type of charge compensation that is functioning in a slightly different way with a different film thickness of oxide on a metal.